morning, morning. There's two signs in the distance there. Put out, actually, it's two or three in a row. Signs from the uh, new shop, the Soup Curry Place. You can see the brown one with white lettering. It's Soup Curry. And just a few minutes ago, they put up a new one, and it, the wind is blowing it the opposite way. It'll come back in a minute. Kaki Kori, Kaki Kori. Shaved ice. You'll see that sign in a minute as the wind blows the other direction. Hey, the Ninja Boys are getting an early start this morning. Saturday, I guess they've got a lot of uh, bookings. They have been busy. Busy, busy, busy. <laughs> now that I said that the shaved ice sign doesn't come. Come on, wind, blow the other direction. It'll come out, it doesn't matter. <laughs> It's a gray day today, and we're told it's going to be wet this afternoon. It's a typical late summer pattern, gray, hazy day, and uh, rain this afternoon and evening. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Okay, something actually, uh, what we're going to do today is one of the same process we've been doing, but we're going to do it in a different way today. Today's color separation day. It's the color separations, or the start of the color. It's junk everywhere. Uh, that's shown. Mm, not today. So that's, that's that's old prints, but not show and tell. Here's our work. Oh, we'll look at this one. This is the show and tell we'll look at. I know. At the end of the stream. We're going to do color separations. We're going to do color separations, but a different way from what we normally do. Because because well, let's explain it as we do it. Let's let's just get going as we go. We're going to use. Uh, we're going to use the iPad, but not uh, not as it was intended. Raiders, Raiders. Oh, it's Contar. Oh, that reminds me. I totally forgot about this. I totally forgot. The idea was on the table to do this backwards. Contar has joined us here with his party of two. The idea was on the table the other day that at the end of these streams, or this stream, they were talking about Saturday. It hasn't been set up. The idea that at the end of this stream on a Saturday, we would, in reverse, we would go and raid Kantar and see what he's been doing. That actually hasn't been organized yet, I'm sorry. The idea was given to me and Dave play with this and Dave get this organized, but I haven't done anything on it. So Kantar, please, I'm not, I don't even know how to do this yet, so, uh, so just hang on. Yeah, iPad is a light table, exactly, exactly. Kantar's ready for that if you want to do it. I don't know how to do this. Is this something the mods can do? Like at the end of this stream today, when I'm ready to get out of here and get back to work, can the mods take this over to Kantar's stream? Let me know what's going on. Let me know. Or, or if you give me a quick lesson, email me the command. <laughs> okay. All right. so you guys set this up. You guys set this up and tell me what to do. And uh, we'll do this at the end of this stream if Kantar's okay with this. I totally forgot yesterday. There was an email thread going back and forth. I'm sorry about that. Okay, put this out of the way for a minute here. Yeah, we're gonna use the iPad as a, as a light table to trace. But before we can do any of this, we have to, we have to do a test printing. Oops, just to drop it all over the floor, reach over, pull your back out. It's, it's the three stooges in one body. The outside mic is hot. Okay, at the moment it says minus 29 dB. Let's uh, put that to minus 34 dB. Let me know, let me know, let me know. Oh, okay, also then, actually before we start, speaking of outside mics, last night the staff was here, we closed. They were a bit late, they left here just after six o'clock and we, we had a bit of a discussion about it. Anyway, the staff left about six o'clock. I go upstairs here to my room. I go into my room upstairs on the second floor and life changed. It happens every year and it happens almost exactly on the same day. I got an audio clip I'm going to play for you. I'm going to turn off this outside mic and I'm going to turn on what I recorded last night. We're going to hear this for just 10-15 just seconds. As soon as I heard that sound I put my little recorder in the window because I want you to have this. 
This was last night about 6.37 in the evening. Well, I can't hear this. It's going through out into the stream. It's not monitoring. It's Aki no Mushi. And just three or four days ago, it was the mean, mean, mean summer sound, like August 30th, August 31st, and now that's switched off, and this one has switched on. It's not a bell insect, I forget the exact name, maybe Suzunomushi, I'm not really quite sure. And I don't think it's a cricket, this one, we'll turn it down now. I don't think it's a cricket. This one lives in trees, and it lives in the tree. There's one in the, the tree here, right outside my balcony. And before I came to Japan, I got, like the Japanese are all too, I don't know, they're too seasonal. They're like, Japan is separate because we have five seasons, unlike other countries, you know. They're always talking about the seasons. They're always talking about this. It's in the haiku poetry. Everything has to have a seasonal word. Before I came here, I'm like, yeah, 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 seasons. You know, there's seasons everywhere. But actually, I get it a little bit more now than I did before. I went into the room there. That sound filled the room, and life changed. Another year has passed. Another summer is over. It's the kind of feeling that we used to get in when it was back to school time. The end of your summer and it's gonna be back to school. You know, when I was like 12 years old or something. There's this mix of, of sadness that the summer's over, there's nostalgia, there's the eagerness to see your friends at school. There's all these different things mixed together. And that's what we get here, which I didn't you get it in your own way. In my culture, it was back to school. Here, it's the sound of these insects. Anyway, anyway, anyway. Okay, step one. We have to do the job that everybody hates to do and hates to see. We have to do the first test printing from this block. <laughs> Something else too. The brush that I'm using these days to wash the key blocks. You know, as I was carving, I used this brush to knock off stuff. It's a brush that we've had for years, and it's the reason I've got it down here is because it's not really so useful. It turned out to be not so useful upstairs. It just didn't work really well, so they tossed it aside, and I've been using it down here for cleaning work. Recognize it? It's Kintaro. Not every Kintaro brush is created equally. Some of them are wonderful and some of them are just like whatever. And this, this brush has been, uh, what's the word? I know when you take something out of service, you know, it's been de, de, decommissioned upstairs because nobody could get it to work. So I keep it down here just for this job, washing off key blocks. Insulting to Mr. Kintaro, but whatever. Have we used any of the brushes? No, 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 no. We're busy, we're busy, we're busy. The box at the moment is upstairs. Uh, Suku-san is uh, uh, having at it. And she may, whatever, as she's doing her next job, she grabs for a brush, she may try a couple of these new ones. I don't know. It's not a priority right now, I'm sorry. We have a lot of brushes upstairs. I'll report to you when I do hear something about it, if I hear anything about it, but it won't be like today or tomorrow. Okay, we're just washing this in a moment. Very, very in a light dab of water. This was glued down with uh, the polyvinyl glue, the white wood glue. Someone's asking, that, does, does your back hurt sitting at a bench like this? <laughs> Up to a few weeks ago, I would have said, no, no problem, I'm fine. No problem at all. Totally okay, I can work all day, blah, 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 blah. At the moment, though, I'm sorry, I can't claim that because I am having, at the moment, sometimes a little bit of back problem. 
but I don't really spend eight hours a day working here. Okay, okay there we are, we're clean. We're clean, we're clean, we're clean. Let's zoom up, say goodbye to it. You're never gonna see it again in this condition. Say goodbye. Okay, someone's asking the business being about on lockdown. We're not on lockdown, but we're closed. There's no purpose to being open because there's almost nobody that can actually get in to see us. So we are preparing to open the shop, but at the moment we are still closed. But it's not because of any government mandate or lockdown. It's just because there's nobody here. I mean, customers. When it comes time uh, for the real printing for the printers upstairs, we'll have to get rid of a little bit more of this wood. But I didn't cut it away yet because I wasn't quite sure how much we'll be using the other way around. So more of this will have to come away. And it would have been sensible to get a piece of paper. Let's see, where can I find? Tom's asking about the paper out. No, it's not, but I need your help on this. There's one printer coming today, Ishikawa-san. She's going to work just this afternoon. So she sent me an email, which I found when I woke up this morning, saying, don't worry about getting up. You know, I got up at 6 o'clock to get the paper out, check the email, and she says, oh, by the way, don't worry, you don't need to get up early this morning. Like, thanks for sending me that email at 5 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Whatever. Anyway, she's coming this afternoon. So her paper is still in the fridge, but now we have the real danger. I have to take it out at about 10 o'clock. So when we're finishing this stream, yes, please remind me, this is Mission Impossible. And she probably knows it's Mission Impossible, but whatever. Okay, too much extraneous talk. Normally when we're doing color separations, remember how we do it. We put the paper carefully into the registration marks. Oh, the Baron is a torn Baron from the print party room. I gotta get a replacement. <laughs> we put the paper into the registration marks. We do our coloring, 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 coloring. We cut new registration marks and paste it down. We can't do it that way this time. Not at all. So what we're gonna do this time, we're gonna do a simulacrum of the old way that registration was transferred. Similar. We'll explain this as we go along. Don't, 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 don't get too confused here. Just, it'll, it'll come, everything will become apparent as we go through this process this morning. So just, just sort of don't bother yourself about the problem here. Why am I doing this? Why am I doing this? Just watch. I am rubbing pigment onto the registration marks. And we're going to put our paper on in such a way that it transfers the key lines and the registration mark. So we'll do our coloring, 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 coloring. But you know, this is not the transfer sheet. The transfer sheets are in the, in the stack here. These are the actual transfer sheets. But this is how we're going to do them. We're going to then go coloring, 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 and then we will take that transfer sheet and we will paste it down on a new block and we will be able to see the corners and we will then cut the corner at that time. It's a little bit less accurate and why are we doing it this way again? Just, just sit tight, it'll come visible in a minute. But right now, let's take a look at this first poll. How did we do 
Okay, here's our, our, here's our first pull from the key block. And if our Carver Chonsan was looking at this, he would just hold his head in his hands. We've got a couple of people working here. Dave, Dave is the older guy here who used to carve really, really super delicate stuff. We now have Chonsan working for us who is super, super, super smooth and clean. He is pipped me now, there's no clear. And if he, when he sees this, he is going to just, he's gonna face palm when he sees this. And he's going to be thinking, he will never say this, but he will think, Dave, Dave has, I know, Dave has lost it. It was nice once upon a time, but, but Dave has lost it. And what he will look at, I, I don't care, I'm going to explain stuff like this. I have got lo I've got lots of good carving done in my life. The fact that I can't actually do it as smoothly and as perfectly as I used to be able to. Whatever, it's life. I'm not going to lose any sleep over it. I'm, I'm going to make, this will be a really, 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 really nice print. But Chonsan, he's going to face palm. What do you think about the taste of this line here as it comes down? I think it's got good, nice, sexy taste. Well, it swells and it shrinks, but no, it swells too much and it shrinks too much. What about the line below it? It swells and shrinks a little bit. Is it attractive? Not really. Some of these are okay. These look nice. too fat, way too fat. Look at this, it doesn't even come smoothly across the line here. Ideally, the knife should have gone right through here and right straight down, but clearly I stopped there, did something else and came back, and they don't not, don't line up. This is not, uh, this is not the AT, <laughs> I'm sorry. It's okay, it's good. I mean, there are not a lot of people out there that can sort of do it at whatever, at this level, but this is no longer a team work. Look at the shape of this fork here. Same thing here. Here too, look at this. There's no sex here, look at this. This should be a sexy curve on a nice deep soup bowl. It's not a sexy curve at all. And look at this, look at the thickness here. I'll have to trim this, that's too thick, way too thick. Oh, there's a, there's a button here, that's gotta come off, look. So you blame it on the chat. Actually, that is a thing, you know. I know, Hontri, that is a thing. When I was doing my best work 15 years ago, a bunch of things were different. Well, look at that. I'm gonna take these off. Look, look, look at these. See these? There's some bumps on the outside. It really is a thing. It's a combination of things, you know. When I was doing, quote, my best work or whatever up to now, I was. I was totally focused, totally not distracted. I was younger, and another thing, my eyes, absolutely, my eyes were different, you know. And I'm not being pretentious about this, you know. Part of, part of, like, why would I talk to you about this stuff today? It's in my interest to have you guys know what's good and what's bad, you know. I could have said, hey, look at this, carved such a nice block, let's go, you know, and nobody would know. It's just more fun and more interesting and, and more productive for us to try and get people to understand what's good and what's bad, you know. Ideally, these lines should all have looked at this point like they were done by a brush. And clearly we're not seeing this. That's not the way that a brush moves and swells and shrinks, you know. So rather than bring a good taste to this print, I have, uh, I'm going to have to go back and and touch some of these up. By the time you get the print, some of these things will be changed. I will go back, I will thin this out a little bit here, I will touch up some of these, all these things at the edge, I will clean these up. Both things are true. It's cool, it's good work on a very difficult environment and it's done okay, but it's not really top class work. That's, I guess that's all I'm trying to say. And somebody's saying, you should be your own harshest critic. I was back in the old days, and, uh, and back in the old days when I was at the other end of this, of this hump, you know, when I was at the beginning, I could see this, oh, when am I going to get good enough to do this? And seeing this, and you fixed it, and you fixed it, and you fixed it, and they did get better and better and better. Just 
maybe I should still be like that, like Hokusai at 95. One day I'm going to be really good at this, you know. It would be a bit pretentious of me to, to start spouting crap like that at this point. One day I will really get good because uh, that's not the way it's going to be. Okay, okay, okay. So someone's got a good point here too, you know. Was the work done by a brush? It wasn't. This is a Photoshop bang. So in that sense, you know, I'm sort of okay with this. This was a quick, quick and fast, what can we say, quick and dirty job by Jed in Photoshop. So yeah, 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 yeah. The lines weren't real lines to begin with. <laughs> I guess so cute. <laughs> And all of this too, I still can't show it to you. The September prints, this prints that they were doing now, is this gonna be October's prints? They will look nice, it'll be okay. But the September prints still, and this is a bit of a tease. Oh my God, as much as I showed you right now, the problems with this, give me a chance and I will show you the September prints. And we talked about socks, you know, you will never need socks again. <laughs> so. <laughs> It's okay, there's no way I'm gonna sit here and blame Jed for this. No way, no way, no way, no way. Okay, a bit talking too much and a bit working not enough. Okay, as I said, instead of putting it into the registration marks, it's going on top. Five of those, I should just do it. Let me, let me run through and make five of these. There's going to be five color blocks on this print. And the color separations, there is a color separation in place here that I am not 100% confident about. And my best guess at the moment is that we are perhaps going to need one more color block once we've done test printing. Because I don't think this current set of color separations is going to, uh, is going to do it for us. Fine there, Dave. Okay, there's four. One more, one more, one more, one more. I just said one more, that was a fib. There's, there's, there's five color blocks. 
but I really, 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 really think we're probably going to need one more. So I prepared six of these sheets yesterday. So let's uh, let's do the one more. We may not need it, but I'm I'm thinking that we probably will need it. So here's the here's the uh, standby copy, the insurance copy. Okay, put this stuff away, and let's now try and explain what's going on and why am I going to do it today a different way from what we usually do. We have five color separation sheets now then, and they need to be colored in. This area for red, this area for blue, this area for green, whatever they're going to be. Paste them on blocks and get carving. I've got for you to see today, I have printouts from the Photoshop Master of, now these are not printed colors, this is a color photocopy from the 7-Eleven. And this would be showing, one of the color blocks is going to be something like this, it'll be a, a, an orange vermilion color, which will be the, the persimmons, and it will be a color that builds up in other areas. Now this will be a persimmon color, over here this is not going to be a persimmon color, but this is under the base of it. Let's just go through these things. This is one of the five colors. Another one will be, and this is darker than what it will be. I printed it out dark so that I could trace it. If you imagine in the print this same color, but toned down, 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 like a sand color. Here's the fish body. It'll be a sandy color. So don't get confused between colors and zones here. This is what the block shape will look like, but the color itself will be sand, and you can already see places where things are going to overlap. We have the vermilion color in the background on the chestnuts. This sand is also going to build up part of that color on the chestnuts. Here and there they overlap. This one will be a deeper brown in the print. And again, it's also on the chestnuts. The chestnut bodies are going to actually be quite a glossy buildup of a number of different colors. So these are related colors. I've printed them in colors that are nearby what we're going to get. There's going to be a red color, which will be part of the uh, striped uh, meat that's inside the nabe bowl here. And part of this bowl will be red. But again, you can see there's a brown here. There's going to be a sand on part of this bowl, and there's going to be a vermilion on part of this bowl. There's really going to be a buildup here. And this is green. So the background over here, imagine it's going to be a green with vermilion on those two. What kind of background color will that be? That's why I say I need one more in reserve because there's a bunch of places where I'm really not sure if that color is going to look like just what we want it to really look like. Anyway, that's the concept. Now, why am I doing it this way today instead of printing out a Photoshop, uh, printing out this on Gumpy, pasting on the block and going? Because we have a real problem. Okay, an area like this, this leaf for the persimmon. It actually all sits within an outline, so totally no problem. I could just paint it within this outline, paste it down, and carve it. But these stripes on this tablecloth, or the cloth that's the basket holding the mushrooms, how do I print that out and paste it on here? Because I need to know this line, because the line I carved here, you just saw it, the line I carved is not the same as the line that was in the Photoshop Master. I just demonstrated, I, I sort of, I said how badly I carved it, but you get the point. The line I carved isn't exactly the same shape as what the original was. And sometimes it might look better, sometimes it might look clunky, but the important point is it's not the same. So I can't print this out, the green part, directly onto Gumpy, cut it down and paste it, because they won't work. So this is why I have to combine these two things. And here is how we're going to do it. Let's grab one of these that looks like not too complicated. I can get started on this while you watch. Put those away. Based on what I said earlier, you probably already know how this is going to work. Put that away, put that away. 
put that away. Bring out our light table. Okay, how do we do that? How do we bring up the brightness controls? Here we go. Brightness to max. Was this the default separation for Dave, or did you make this separation? I think you've mistyped that. I think you're asking, was this the default separation from Jetson? Yes and no. I have already. Okay, we. Oh no, I know what I gotta do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. That's why we are going to have to lift this off here. This is why we printed the corner, because I'm going to have to take it off its carrier, put it on here, then put it back on the carrier and paste it down. And that would lose registration, and that's why we need to carry the registration with us here. light is now too bright, but I don't have a control for it here. Hang on a sec. Let me try and move that light away a bit. Careful, Dave. Careful, 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 careful. It's fine on your end, it's not fine on my end. That light is shining off the surface of the gumpy paper and it's difficult to see the underneath. So I'm, I'm, I'm not so much worried about you as I am worried about me. <laughs> but you get the idea, right? You can see exactly what's happening now. We have got the sheet of gumpy paper that I just printed from the actual blocks itself. They are the determiner of the areas. And I'm now gonna pick up information that I didn't have. We need to know. So this information is now gonna get transferred to the color block. Okay, so on some of this I don't need to do. So this area here, the color is going to match the lines. I don't need to do this at all, but I do need to remember that I have to do it. So at this point, we're back to our trusty
Actually, there's an indication of how bad I am here. I am sorry. I am going to have to do this with a lens. You know? I really, 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 really cannot see this stuff anymore. Ah, oh, that reminds me. That reminds me, that reminds me. Speaking about not being able to see anymore, I got interesting news the other day. I, know I have keywords in my Google search for stuff, you know, like when things are for sale on Yahoo Auctions, I hear about them. And when there's a woodblock print exhibition happening somewhere, I hear about it. I have a keyword set in my Google search, and these days when there's news about glaucoma, <laughs> it comes up. And I saw a really, really, really interesting, I gotta post this link for you. Somebody here in Japan, a, a university group, and I think it's a media group, a TV station, is what I read. Somebody here in Japan has created a video game or, or a game that plays on your, on, your, uh, on your phone. And the idea is as you're playing this video game on your phone, you, you look at the screen at a certain distance and you stare at the screen in a certain way and different things come on the screen, like it's a video game, shoot, 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 shoot. And based on what level of glaucoma you have, in other words, places that you can't see, I guess it realizes when you don't shoot at this character, it's because you didn't see it, stuff like this. So repeated playing of this game, holding it in a certain fixed way, looking at it in a certain way, gives the game designers an indication of what areas of your eye are not functioning properly. I get this, every three months I go to the university, to, to the hospital here, for my, my uh, head in the hood. I put my head in the hood, look at one spot, they shine little uh, spots all over the place, and the dead zone in my eye here now, when they're shining spots there, I don't see it, I don't click the button, so the doctor gets a map of the dead zones in my eye, which are growing, it's increasing, increasing. My own glaucoma now is, is on the right-hand side, progressing very well. My left hand side is still okay. Anyway, so look into this. I know if it's plus minus, I know the idea behind this thing is to try and diagnose people earlier. I didn't learn about my glaucoma till I was like 67, but it had actually been in there for 10 years before that. Should I have known about it? Could it have helped? That's the other side of it. There's really nothing they can do about this anyway, so it doesn't really make any difference. It would have helped me to learn about this or not helped at all. I don't know. This pen is not really behaving. Oops, a bit off the... Hi, hi, hi. The sound outside is the vacuum cleaner at the lobby of the hotel across the street. The lady, always the same lady, she's been there as long as we've had this shop here. It's the same lady every morning. Maybe different on weekends, I don't know.
of the different people in our community, the vacuum lady, the bag lady, I don't think. You know, this carving isn't all that bad, you know, there's some really, really nice little carving here. I, I was perhaps a bit too uh, harsh on myself a few minutes ago. This isn't badly done, you know. This is okay, these prints are going to look nice. It's okay, I should have... Um, take back what I said earlier. Erase it from the internet. Oh, speaking about that, erasing from the internet. That reminds me. It's in a, people are always asking about these Twitch streams going up to YouTube. I know I myself, I'm not doing that. My own YouTube channel, my own YouTube channel is curated stuff. I want our YouTube channel to be carefully curated, properly maintained, and, and, and stuff like that. But these Twitch streams are going up to a fan channel, and the lady whose handle, I think she's called HB Thingy, a lady who we know who's come here for a few times for a print party when we used to do print parties, she has been up, so here we are. I think Yabrowski or HB Thingy, she has a different handle name everywhere. Anyway, she saw the other day, Somebody had asked, is the AMA video going to be updated to YouTube? Somebody asked over on Instagram. And I'm not, like I said, I'm not involved with that kind of stuff. But she has already done it. She did it after seeing that message. She took the AMA video the other day and she put it up on the YouTube channel. The, the, you know, the, the, fan, uh, the fan YouTube channel. So, uh, so it's there already. It's just one more thing that I'm sorry that I just really can't get. Uh, there's enough going on already. Just I can't get involved with. So. Another thing about this, because I'm the person who's going to be carving this, I don't have to really be super careful about what I'm doing here. It's just because I'm the guy who will be doing it like later this afternoon or tomorrow. I don't have to be super careful. If it was going to an outside carver, you know, I, I can't really come over the lines. I've got to be a bit more careful because they're going to look at this and think, geez, what's going on here? You've got to be super careful so that they know exactly what to do. You can't leave it in any doubt. Include this area, exclude that area. But because it's me who's going to be doing this, and it really quite soon, all I need is enough hint or knowledge to let me know what's in and what's out. And I can figure that out for myself here.
Okay, I think we have this first one done. And as usual, instead of me going through the whole process and doing all six of these right now, let's move ahead and paste this one down so that people can see what's going on. We won't be using those. We will be using this. Okay. Okay, so let's get that same piece of paper we had before. Put it roughly back on here. It doesn't have to be in the same place. It doesn't matter anymore now. This is where the registration gets carefully, carefully done. We can see the black line here. So this is now, these are now the registration marks. Kind of rough kento. No, it's a perfect kento. You know, it's it's exactly. I cut it off there exactly the same as I would have if I had been printing this out from Photoshop. Nothing rough about this here. It's a joke, of course. This is the joke. Arabikuri Yamato. Arabik. Arabik Yamato is 
Yamato glue made from Arabic gum, Arabic. This is glue. This is Arabicuri Yamato. Ara, surprise. This is not glue. We keep it around the front. It's not glue, it's imitation. It's honey. Breakfast glue. <laughs> so. So someone says on a kind of a rough kento, there's nothing rough about this, you know, this is exact as we can get it here. What you saw me do is pretty much, that's the way she goes here, this is exact kento. If it turned out that I've slipped up here and it's a, a fraction out one way or the other, the printers will move it. The printers move registration marks all the time, it's a normal part of their job. On these small prints, it really doesn't happen very often because the amount of paper swelling and shrinkage is minimal. And in this case, the amount of block swelling and shrinkage is non-existent. This is a small piece of wood and it's plywood. There's no way this is going to expand, contract in any way whatsoever. Also peel, peel, peel. We're not gonna start, don't get excited about the peel here because this is not five millimeter gumpy, a five momme gumpy. This is extremely thin gumpy because I wanted to trace. So there's going to be no nice, wonderful peel here today with a piece of gumpy that we can resell or something. Sure, 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 Dave. You'll see. It doesn't need peeling. We'll, we'll see. Should we try it or not? I don't know. Let's just have a look and see what we've got here. There she is. That's really, 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 really thin paper. It's not going to peel. There is something we can do, and we can do this. A slightly moist finger, we can peel off, not peel off, we can, we can, what's the word? You tell me, rub off. Because there are fibers there that will come off and make it a bit more visible. But there's no way there's enough fiber there to actually form a, a sheet of paper. You can see what's happening here. There's fibers loose. This is the three momme, the three. We have our gumpy in two thicknesses, three and five. Can you can sort of, can you see it? Like it can sort of, fragments of it can peel, but there's no way you're gonna get a full peel. But also, we don't need it. There we go. Color block number one, traced, transferred, glued down, ready to go. There's also, too, another level. Somebody's mentioned this here. We also have camellia oil. At the moment, this paper is, at the moment, this paper is wet, so it's kind of super transparent. As this dries over the next few minutes, it will become a little bit more opaque. So it's possible at the moment of carving, you can get little dabs. You can take a dab of camellia oil and put it on. And you can turn this into something absolutely, completely, totally transparent. There you are. It looks like bare wood with, with uh, an image on it. You can barely see. There actually is gumpy paper there, but you wouldn't know it. So actually what we did there actually was almost exactly the traditional way of doing this, you know. If it had been a print with a, a kimono pattern or something that had been done by the designer, 
the person in the workshop who's doing the color transfers would do the main transfer from the key block as we did. That would give the main lines. Then they're doing this on thin gumpy paper and that person doing the transfers then could use that thin gumpy paper the way we did, not on an iPad, but there's a pattern that's been prepared. Hi, here, use this pattern for that print. And they've got the pattern drawn here. And if that pattern had been like something here, you could put your paper on and move it and move it and move it and move it and trace the same pattern onto different parts of your paper. Absolutely, this was done. Somebody drawing a pattern didn't need to draw a mega size pattern. Just draw one, you know, one unit of it. And the people could then move the paper around on top of this and extend the pattern to the area you needed it to go. These guys were efficient and fast. Trucks and trucks and trucks. <laughs> Okay, now again, so that the people who are new here can see exactly what happens next, let's just carve a bit. There's five to transfer, and this is my job today. After the stream is over, I will be transferring the other four of those in the same way that you saw me do this. I'll get a piece of wood from upstairs, paste them down, one, two, three, four. And this will be, if all goes well, it'll be a six color, six color print. Although I almost certainly suspect it's going to need more. So someone's saying, now, do we have two wood blocks, one for red and one for outline? What you're seeing is two of a group of six. One will, yes, it'll be the outline. After I finish carving this one, those areas will print, but don't confuse the color. I used red here just simply because I got red markers, that's all. The red markers, it's just visible. I'm going to use the same red color for all of the transfers. Then when the block is finished, the printers sit down. They have no idea what color will be needed for this block. Because when it gets to the printers, it'll be a bare piece of wood. But of course, I will be talking to the printer for a test printer. I'll be showing her Jed's original little plan. She can see it's a persimmon. And she'll say, ah, oh, 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 okay, I get it. This block will be a persimmon color. She will mix that and print it. So don't confuse the color you see here with what's going to happen in the print. Transfers are done with a bright color to make it look visible. Whoa. And it's not the printing. Okay, 15 minutes to show and tell. Yeah, I got you. Okay, while I'm doing this carving then for a few minutes, did anybody, did you guys make a decision on the, you know, uh, what you call it? I forget the word. <sighs> At the end of the stream, rating, rating. Is, are we going to raid Contar's, uh, Contar's uh, stream, stream today? If so, let, send me an email. Somebody send me an email. I'm, I'm busy. Raid command. Okay. I have to type this in the chat window. Change the name, change the target channel. Don't do it right when you say goodbye. I'm not quite sure what this is all about. Uh, one of the mods here has given me the actual command, but I'm really not quite sure when, how to do this. But uh, Okay, as we get closer, let me know. I have now copied and pasted the command that, he's, that he sent me. Contar, are you there? Are you ready for this? Are you up to this? Okay, anyway, let's get back, back to work here and we'll keep me in touch. Conter says he'll be ready. Uh, no, Conter, while we're waiting and while I'm doing this carving, chat with people here on the stream. Tell them what to expect. Tell them what you're doing, just so they know what's going on. We're going to raid our friend Contar's channel here. Uh, he's doing something involved with Japanese work. It's not Japanese woodblock pin making. He's going to want to... He and the mods can tell you what's going on. Can 
There's something else about what's happening right now here too. These are, this is now carving for real to come up. But when I mentioned a few minutes ago, the shape of some of these uh, vegetables that are in this soup, I think I pointed out that one of these lines was a bit too thick. It didn't line up. But now if I just go ahead mindlessly here, I transferred those lines to here. If I carve a color block that matches this, then I can't go back and fix this. So what I'm going to do this morning as I'm doing this, I'm going to keep in mind those areas that I might want to shave and adjust here, and I'm going to keep away from those. I'm not going to carve that thing right now until I've actually fooled around with this. And ideally, whatever, of course, I should have taken the key block, taken a test print from it, and spent the next hour or so uh, fiddling and shaving and fixing and doing the things that I can do with it before making the color transfers. Of course, that's, you know, sort of common sense. But I really wanted to go ahead this morning and show this process. Can someone explain to me why Dave is carving so deep when it's such a small print? Why am I carving so deep? Not quite sure. I mean, I'm carving our normal way, I don't know. The, the question of depth, you know, yeah, here I've gone down. How far down did we go? I don't know. How do you measure it? gone down two millimeters or something I don't know so theoretically this could have been a tiny bit shallower it's a question of, of two things how easy it is to carve and then how easy it is to print we want one to make sure that when the printers print there's no fear whatsoever that any of this is going to make blocks in their prints they have to work fast quick bang 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 so the first priority this has to be out of the way and in this case this is out of the way is it maybe perhaps a tiny bit deeper than it needs to be hmm, maybe so but we don't want any doubt it's got to be just out of the way for the printers then second is the way i carved it you cut the lines then chop out it's sort of a one two three stage process and i did it in a way that was easy and productive for me for me to leave this shallower actually is a bit more difficult you're, you're finally moving your chisel. You're not quite sure if you've cut this line deep enough. So I'm not sure what to say. The way I did it here is an easy, quick, efficient way for me. And to leave this quite a lot shallower would, would have been more difficult for me as well. So uh, choppers, everyday choppers, something going on. The 
just like back in the Olympics. There were choppers all over town, every minute, all over the place. It was chaos during the Olympics. I don't know, these are just traffic choppers, or I don't know. Traffic report. There is going to be a bunch, and I think, when is it coming up? Is it coming up in, in autumn? There's the G7 or something thing happening in Japan. It's not Tokyo this year, it's happening down in Hiroshima and some other places. I think up in Karuizawa, some of the meetings are happening there. But that's going to be helicopter city. There's going to be choppers just everywhere. Choppers and planes and police and you name it. Security like you've never seen anywhere else before on the planet. A G7 meeting in Japan. <laughs> and no policeman will see his family for the, for the entire course of the, of the whatever the thing. The policeman can say, just say goodbye to their family and like, see you next year. We had, ha, had I guess he's retired now, we had a, a police, uh, we've got two police officers in our group here. One was my uh, kid's mother's sister's husband. So what's that, my kid's uncle. He was a police officer, a detective. That he, he would give us tales about this sort of stuff, things he was allowed to tell. But my God, his family never, never, never saw him, you know. His girls grew up, and they, they, they had a daddy, they knew they had a daddy, but... And then whenever there was events or something, just that's it. He just checks out, see you guys later when it's all over. This wood is much softer than what we used for the key block, and we could not have carved the key on this piece. It's way, way, way too soft. Looking good. Look at that, good clear video, wow. It's interesting seeing the Russian embassy in Japan surround, <laughs> surrounded by riot buses and police. I wonder why. I wonder why. Well, it may, it may have always been like that. I have no idea. I don't know. Five minutes for show and tell. Okay, I got you. It's a quiet, peaceful show and tell today. Probably doesn't even need 15 minutes. If I run a little bit late here, it's okay. printers are waiting for this you know it's already late this block was theoretically supposed to be ready September 1st and because of my little uh, episode with my back last week it's now late so I got to be careful I have to get this thing done now as fast as possible but I also have to be really careful if I spend too much time at this bench hunched over like this I'm gonna get in trouble again with my back so uh, so I gotta be careful I'm gonna do a couple of hours on this today then go for a nice long walk then come back and do some more
Be hungry for some sliced persimmon. <clears throat> But there will be six piece, uh, six blocks, six printing blocks for this print. They will be on two pieces of wood. This piece of wood has two blocks. We won't be using the back side of this. It's very poor quality. Probably not using the back side of this one. And then I'll get another piece of wood from upstairs, and we will put one, two, three, four of these transfer sheets on it. So we will have, I believe, six. The printers will have to print the piece of paper six times to make the finished print. There's lots of our videos on our channel. The most recent video on the channel shows exactly that process happening. It shows the carving happening to the end. And the video before that one shows the printing process. So if you are curious about how this works, and you know, a bit confused by what you're seeing here today, there's tons of video, tons of video on our channel showing how it works. 9.15, okay, let me just finish going around this persimmon. Buzz, buzz, buzz. I can feel the buzzers. Okay, relax, relax. Let me finish going around this persimmon. Okay, 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 okay. Yes, I'm supposed to take paper out for Ishikawa-san, not Suguzan. She'll be in tomorrow. These ladies, why are they working on the weekends? It's because of their family situation. If their husband is working on the weekends, it's quite common for them to come here and work on the weekends. They're not going to sit at home all just doing nothing. So if their husband is not there, no family is there, then they, they will come in. Ishikawa-san's coming today, and Suguzan's coming tomorrow. Ishikawa-san may also be here tomorrow. We have a small, peaceful little show and tell today. Your socks are safe, no big deal. It's, I, I think it's an interesting thing to see, but this is not a jaw-dropping, spectacular Japanese object. It's simply an, uh, another example of an interesting way that woodblock prints are used in society. And I think, actually, we haven't seen this before, which is why I bought these this week. They come up on Yahoo Auctions, the same object here, they come up on Yahoo Auctions all the time more daily. Any, anytime you go and look on Yahoo Auctions, there's going to be some of these there, because they were produced during the 1950s and 60s, and e even today still, I think. They're produced in the thousands here in Japan. Today, not so much. Today, probably, it's not really done with woodblock printing anymore, although I, I don't know. I don't know. But in this era, we're talking here about 19... <gasps> 1950s, can I? 1950s, 1960s, it was very, very common for woodblock printing to be used for this thing you're about to see. And I don't think we've got some in the collection, and I don't think you've seen it before. Dave, th this is nostalgic for me because this harks back. I know my mother is not watching the streams these days. She can no longer sort of handle that kind of interaction with a computer. But if my mother was watching this today, she would jump up and down. Oh, look at that, look at that, look at that, look at that. I used to get those for you. My mother, after I, when I was in high school, my mother used to work at the local post office. Caught himself with a knife. I don't think so. I didn't, did I, did I? No, I, I thought I was being careful. Not hiding any blood here, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> There are streams like that, right? When I cut myself and I sort of tuck that finger away so you can't see anything that's going on. That's <laughs> not today. <laughs> oh, when I gasped? No, I'm sorry. <laughs> nothing, 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 nothing. Okay, enough teasing, enough teasing. <laughs> they are f what's known in the post office business as first day covers. These are objects for stamp collectors to collect. And Dave, as a, as a kid, a middle school kid or high school kid, would have really, really, really enjoyed these. I didn't know anything about Japan or Japanese prints, but what these are, the, the people know, whatever, they're first day covers. The post office issues stamps 
And of course, many people collect the stamps. And what a lot of people also want to collect, as I did when I was 10, 12 years old, you want to collect the stamp, the, the rubber stamp, from the issuing post office. This was a, a stamp a design of, of a, a, a famous toy, common in Takamatsu. So this first day cover is stamped at the Takamatsu post office with Showa 33, 12, 20, the date of issue. Just enough to cancel the stamps, but not enough to spoil them. And the envelope itself is made with woodblock printing. I think inside, because these were made for collectors, inside we have the information sheet on this particular stamp. Special postage stamp for the new year, 1959. I was eight years old. 15 million issued. 15 million woodblock prints? No, 15 million stamps, of course. And then different companies prepare these covers and sell them for collectors. So let's zoom in a bit. We've got five of these in this set. And these are woodblock prints, very, very, very simple woodblock prints made to match the design of the stamp. Not a replica of the stamp itself, but just a print box. Now this is pretty rough work. This is really not the best one I could have shown you at first, because man, that one's pretty rough. They're not all that bad. And a couple of things about these. These were printed woodblock prints in massive massive quantities. And uh, the very first time I visited the printmaker Matsuzaki Keizaburo, oh, geez, this is for the same stamp, but a different design. Interesting. Same stamp, same, oh, I guess so just they made different variations. People could order the one that they wanted. Soka, soka, soka. I mean, the, the, the envelopes here, they're nothing to do with the post office. The post office didn't make these. This is a private company making these and selling them to collectors. And the private company would take the orders in advance, get the stamps ready, go down to that local post office, hand in the batch of 5,000. The clerks in there would happily do the thing with all the postage and give them back to the company, who would then ship them out to the waiting collectors. So this has never been through the mail. There's no address label on it. Anyway, as I was, I was visiting Matt Sachs, and the very first time I visited his workshop, he was doing a batch of this kind of stuff. And I'm like, and the stack of paper was, it was whatever, I, I don't want to exaggerate. it was like this, and then behind him off to the side, there's another stack of paper like this. And he and his son and his wife were just blowing through these things. They're printed on dry paper. Nobody takes the time and trouble to moisten the paper, and they're printed with a kind of design that doesn't need delicate lines and tight registration. So you can see this. So dry paper with a good solid dab of pigment on the block, and you're okay, you're good to go. It's opaque pigments also too. These are layering on top of each other, opaque pigments. It's like folk art, actually. It's kind of folk art. And they were made in the thousands and thousands and thousands of copies. And for all I know, this is still a thing here in Japan. This part, I believe, would not be woodblock cut. This part, I believe, would be something like a polymer plate. I don't think this is carved. I think the lettering here, it is relief. And it may be printed at the same time the woodblock print is made. But that's probably almost certainly polymer plate. This is uh, Himejijo. Himejijo, the uh, white heron castle down in Himeji. What dates are we talking about here? 56. I was four years old. Five years old. So I'm saying made for the Western market. This could be actually, I know I think it's not made for the Western market, but I think it's made also in a way that they would be of interest to Westerners as well. So I think they're, they're, t they're covering both bases here. It's a Japanese thing for the Japanese market, I think, but by having this on here, it makes it more accessible to Western collectors, I think. And as we saw, that information sheet inside is also bilingual.
in a box over in Ome. I have hundreds of these, hundreds of these. My mother worked at the post office for a bunch of years. Dave was a stamp collector. So what she did was, she didn't have the old, like the, the handmade woodblock print version. She would just get a normal envelope and she did the, you know, stamp and she would set the time like <laughs> morning. And she brought for me, each time there was a new stamp issued, she brought me a personalized first day cover for this. And actually she, I was collecting blocks. So she would put a block of four on there, put the stamp in the middle and bring it to me. And I've got a bunch of ones that are actually uh, unique because she fooled around with the stamps and stuff there. <laughs> she set times and stuff that whatever. So I have like the, the earliest the date of the first day cover of a whole bunch of these Canadian stamps because my mother worked in the post office and she had access to the stamp machine. So I don't even remember. I remember she told me something. Like, Look, like, don't talk to your friends at school about this, okay? <laughs> So I don't remember. <laughs> I don't even remember now. I just remember. Yeah, mom. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Dave's got this little item that he can't tell anybody about, but whatever. I don't even remember. She's not evil. She didn't do anything horrible to the system. But they would be, before they set it up for the day's production run for the regular people who wanted first day covers, she would like make a unique one for me first and then and then do the jobs for, for all the other people that were lined up outside the post office on the first day of issue, you know. Thinking about it now, actually, though, it, the thing that I've got is different from everybody else's, so it maybe looks like a forgery. It's not real. The, the ones that day were done with a different time. I don't know. <laughs> okay, there we have it. There we have it. There we have it. I have a mom who works in a candy store. Whatever. <laughs> All right, let's do this raid thing. Let's uh, pop up our own thing here. I have that command that somebody said. Kantar, you go off and get ready. Thanks for reminding me to get the paper out. Our own closing talk here today, Saturday. I'll be back here two days from now, and you know exactly what I will be doing. Yeah, I'm waiting. I'm waiting for your instructions. You guys tell me when to do this and when to start. I will just wait for instructions here. So I'll be back here on Monday in two days here, and we'll be carving, of course, the color blocks, assuming I don't uh, do something. Okay, somebody says start now. So that command that Coding Gummy sent me, if I paste that into the chat here, let's do this. Thanks everybody for watching here. Let's now go and watch Kantar struggle with his level of Japanese. Oh, the waving guy, I still didn't see this. But now I don't know what to do. I am now well, it's a button. It says, do you want to raid now or cancel? And I'll click the button that says, yes, let's raid now.